course, much fun on the set during the touchline on Y254. Every Saturday happening from 1 to 3, talking matter, sporting disciplines, both local and beyond, cutting across various sporting disciplines. And this time around, this matters international football. And the draw for UEFA Champions League was conducted yesterday. Man United playing against Barcelona. And that will be a peculiar task for United to see whether they can, uh, you know, try to revenge on what uh, Barcelona did against them in 2011, seven years down the line when they lock horns against each other. Next month on fourth during the first leg. Joe, straight into the Champions League, bro. Whatever that happened yesterday, do you expect Juventus? Well, against Ajax Amsterdam, FC Porto, uh -huh. playing against Liverpool, Man United, against Barcelona and Tottenham Hotspurs. Of course, that English Premier League derby against Manchester City. Outside there on various social media platforms, people already hinting about the teams that will qualify to the next stage. Uh -huh. They are saying Liverpool, Juventus, Barcelona and Manchester City. What's your take? Well, obviously, if um, Ajax surprised everyone when they defeated Real Madrid, and that's because, again, Real Madrid, their defense was very disorganized. You're coming now against a team which has a very organized defensive mentality in Juventus. So, again, I would see Juventus going through there. Tottenham against Manchester City, unfortunately, Tottenham's form has not been that great. Manchester City has been great. And for me, I would obviously see Man City going through Porto against... Um, Porto is against who again? Liverpool. Porto Liverpool, is against yes. Liverpool. Porto against Liverpool. For Porto to get to the quarterfinals, there's something good that they're doing in that team. We cannot overlook them and just say they're going to be a walkover. No way. We, can, we, we should expect Liverpool to win that game. But again, I believe Porto will give a good, good... Um, Account of themselves. Yes, they will. And then finally, Manchester United versus Barcelona. I think it's going to be a tricky fix. And on that one, you have to be objective, no <laughs> partiality. <laughs> ah, okay, I'll be objective. I think it's a tricky fixture for Manchester United. Obviously, the strengths in Barcelona cannot be ignored. However, if we play against their weakness, which will be the defence, I believe Manchester United can get something away, if we're starting away. But if we are not careful, the attacking prowess of Messi, uh, uh, Suarez coming into this game, Rakitic in the midfield, it, they're going to overhaul Manchester United, obviously. So it's, it's, it's a wit, to be honest. But if Manchester play towards their weakness, Barcelona's weakness, Manchester can get a win. Ronaldo, both you and I know that in football anything can happen and all those teams that have made it to the quarterfinal stage of UEFA Champions League football, individual brilliance, they have got what it takes to you know, get to another level, that same final stage of uh, the most pre second most prestigious football tournament, especially after World Cup. And of course, Roma did pull some magic and huge surprise against Barcelona some time back. And you know that uh, not everyone expected that to happen. But mm. overall, what do you make of the draw? Your overall assessment about the draw? I think uh, the draws, it was exciting. It was exciting to see the, the way the, the, the teams have been pulled. And uh, the match, uh, to me, the, the, the match that will be getting my my attention will be Manchester United versus Barcelona because if you look at the way Manchester United have uh, really clawed their way into that uh, quarterfinal uh, uh, match that will be playing against Barcelona, I think uh, nobody expected them to be there. And uh, against all odds, they managed to scrap, get some scrappy wins, some well-deserved wins. And now here they are. They want to, they're, they're going to play against Barcelona. And to me, that uh, it's, it's a team to watch. It's a team to watch. Even though everyone is ruling them outside out, but uh, to me, I think uh, they're, they're the team to watch. That they probably they might be the underdogs when play against Barcelona. But uh, I'm really excited to see who will be making it to the quarterfinals. Even though I can predict that maybe it will be either Manchester City, Barcelona, or Juventus. The three Prior of those, to the draw, one of the, two of them would, would be Prior the to the draw, fascinating performance from individual players Cristiano Ronaldo mm -hmm. and Lionel Messi for Juventus and Barcelona respectively, and that reigniting, you know, heated debate, the conversation of who between the two is the most prolific player on earth. Ronaldo scoring a hat trick against Atletico Madrid to overturn a tunnel deficit they had suffered at uh, away, mm -hmm. and you know Messi also scoring a brace during 5-1 demolition against the opponents. What do you assess about you know the way the road to the quarterfinal stage? Do you think all that made it to this particular point deserves? Yeah, I do. It's uh, based on merit. 
No, 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 no. It's all based. It's 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 hard work. Uh, I was watching the Juventus game in the in the tunnel as we were getting in to play the game, and you would see Cristiano Ronaldo talking to his to the players. He's motivating the players. We need to win this game. It's not about Cristiano Ronaldo anymore. It's about the team. Okay. And if you see the, his first goal again, the assist was brilliant for him from the header. Okay. He's a maverick in this competition. Cristiano Ronaldo. He's been there, he's done it with Manchester United, he's done it with Real Madrid, and now he wants to do it with Juventus. On the other side, you have a one club wonder called Lionel Messi. He's done it with Barcelona a couple of times. But if you look at the intensity that the two teams are needed to qualify for the next round, for the quarterfinals, I think Juventus want, would have want, wanted it more and worked for it more than Barcelona did, in my honest opinion. Hence, you would say there was an edge to what Ronaldo did over Messi. I'm not saying Messi is not great, I'm not saying Ronaldo is not great, but in terms of the hunger to qualify for the quarterfinals, I think Juventus needed this win against Atletico Madrid. If there is a time Juventus uh, have been in crucial need of victories and especially lifting UEFA Champions League title, is that time when Gianluigi Buffon, the veteran goalkeeper, was still at the old lady. I also wish them to carry the trophy just for his sake. But since he left, you know, Juve are still sparkling. Of course, Paris Saint-Germain, uh, French money bags are club. He joined, have already been eliminated from the showpiece by Man United. But do you think Juventus desperately needs this particular title? Definitely, I think they do. They do. Plus, uh, looking at uh, their main man, that Cristiano Ronaldo, I think uh, he went to Ju Juventus for one thing, you know, to some you want to conquer. You want to conquer across the continent. Across the continent, I think, and Champions League, uh, the Champions League trophy, winning it with Juventus, I think that would be a major boost in his career. And uh, they're really desperate to go all the way up to the finals. And I'm looking at a situation whereby the finals will, just like I said before, the finals will be maybe two of the team, two of the team, two of these teams. That's uh, Liverpool, Manchester City, and maybe Barcelona or even Juventus. So I think it's it's a, it's a tricky affair, and for Juventus to claw their way up to the, where they've reached, I think they'll not be leaving anything a chance. No, they won't. Yeah, of mm. course, no much English Premier League action this particular weekend. Watford playing against. Uh, Crystal Palace this particular evening, Swansea City against uh, Manchester City. That is FA Cup fixtures. Then Wolverhampton Wanderers playing Man United at 10:45 p.m. East African time tomorrow. Of course, Sunday Brighton against Millwall. Then uh, in English Premier League, as far as the fixtures are concerned, only a few of them are on card. Bournemouth against Newcastle United, Burnley against Leicester City, West Ham United against Huddersfield. Then tomorrow, I think it's sort of you know. Uh, fascinating Sunday because it's Chelsea against Everton, then Fulham against Liverpool. Quickly, about the English Premier League race, of course as it stands, Manchester City and Liverpool. Manchester City, the current holders, and Liverpool, serious challengers. What do you make of the race so far? <laughs> I mean, tomorrow it's a must win for Liverpool. Uh, Liverpool need to win tomorrow, get the slight advantage before Manchester City can come and play their, their, play their game. Um, obviously, for Chelsea again, for the rest of the top four, with Chelsea's win tomorrow, it will push them again to fifth position, just below Arsenal, or difference will be the goal difference. Um, they need that win again against Everton. It won't be easy against Everton, but they need the win. But more so, if you look at the corresponding fixtures after that for Manchester City, they'll have to play Tottenham three times. Twice in, uh, twice in the Champions League and once in, uh, and also in the Premiership. They have to play them again. So again, if you look at those fixtures against Liverpool's fixtures, not saying again Porto is a small team, but if you look at the other fixtures, they have Cardiff, they have, um, they have Cardiff, they have Southampton also to play. So there are these points that they can pick up, that Liverpool can pick up, that Manchester City might lose these points. So it's very vital right now for tomorrow for Liverpool to pick up these three points to guide them through at least to have a gleam of hope because the fixtures that Manchester City will have <coughs> later on as compared to Liverpool, Liverpool have a higher chance of getting more points on the board as compared to Manchester City. Your team Man United is also chasing for a top four finish to qualify for UEFA yes. Champions League football and uh, uh, they are, you know, like last show, mm -hmm. last weekend against Arsenal where they were beaten 2-0, yeah. also derailed their chances of making it to top four. Do you think that, you know, Reality check mm -hmm. was 
awakening call it, to Ole Gunnar Solskjaer? It was an awakening call, definitely. I mean, uh, um, Arsenal played the best football I've seen in quite a while. They outpaced Manchester United. Wow, that is sportsmanship. They are <laughs> <laughs> For the <laughs> first time. <laughs> <laughs> they outpaced Manchester United. Um, t tactically, uh, they were brilliant. So um, it was a wake-up call for Manchester United. And now tonight's fixture against, against Wolves, it must be a must win for Ole Gunnar Solskjaer because you look at the race for the top four to qualify for the Champions League. And then you look at this other avenue that you have towards winning the FA Cup and obviously getting a chance, even if it's a glimmer of a chance, you know, to participate in European comp competition. I think for Laguna Solskjaer, he has to look at all these options and also regard the fact that there's a Barcelona waiting. So again, it goes down to those fixtures. Those fixtures between the, the beginning of the, first, of the first, uh, first match against Barcelona all the way to possibly, if they will get to the finals of the FA Cup, those points that are in between those teams, those points are needed for Manchester United, at least to push for a top four finish. Ronald, Manchester City, do you think you're going to retain the title? Of course, Pep Guardiola uh, denying claims that he's headed for Juventus. You and I, I know, we read uh, several headlines indicating that Pep might be headed out of English Premier League football to join Juventus. But now he says that his key priority is to help City uh, retain the title and probably lift to UEFA Champions League. You know, anything is possible. What do you make of their potentiality so far? Well, uh, my only concern they is... They have been uh, luckily winning fixtures, though. <laughs> Not luckily. <laughs> <laughs> they, 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 they deserve it. They deserve it. But uh, looking at the way Manchester City are playing right now, I think, uh, uh, and uh, to make it even worse, they're in the front seat. They're the ones now, you know, dictating how things are going. I think it would be so hard for Liverpool to catch up with them because uh, Pep Guardiola, is, um, he's been there before. He's won it. He's won it with, the, with Manchester City. So I think he, he really knows how to handle the players when... When, 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 uh, when there's a lot of pressure in the team and when, they, when it's needed most, because I think going into this, the last stretch of the league, and you need all your players to be mentally strong, to be mm. physically fit, to, you know, to be dedicated and you know, to just be professional and try to, um, try to maintain that focus so that they can win all the remaining matches. So I think uh, being, the, being a manager of his calibre, even though there have been rumours that he may, be, he, he may be heading to Juventus and all that, but I think his first priority is now to try and win this trophy, which I, to me, I think that's his most prize possession, leave alone even the Champions League. I think the he'll be concentrating a lot on trying to win this uh, the, the, the EPL trophy so that uh, even when he'll be leaving, even maybe at the end of the season or whatever time he'll be leaving, I think he'll, be, he'll have left a legacy behind. So to me, I don't think uh, uh, Liverpool will take this. I'm sorry to say that because, uh, I mean, Manchester City, they've been a club that's been there before and uh, Liverpool bottled it the moment they started losing the, the, the previous matches or even getting some poor results. Man, there is this uh, announcement that, you know, grabbed international headline, grabbed international attention and focus. The return of one big man, Zizou, Zinedine Zidane, to Santiago Banabo to replace Santiago Solari. Solari who's been not uh, performing very well with the Los Blancos of Real Madrid. Does this insinuate that, you know, we lack uh, high-profile tacticians because why should we keep on recycling these coaches, man? <laughs> It's not a matter of recycling. I think uh, it's it's a it's a matter of quality. If you have a good man, if you have a manager like Zinedine, I mean, who else would you would you want to hire? And I think uh, Pochettino. Pochettino. But uh, anyway, Pochettino. There's a, there's no possibility that Pochettino can leave uh, can leave Tottenham. Even though the other there time is an indication that he has a project at the Spurs at White Hart Lane. Mm -hmm. yeah, he has though, to finish first. Yeah, even though Joe say Joe, Joe sometime back said that uh, you know he he's been there for like ten years, he's been having a, uh, he's been bottling something for ten years, and mm -hmm. maybe very soon he'll be they'll be uh, setting up a, a bottle factory. <laughs> <laughs> but that's character assassination. Yeah, that's character assassination. <laughs> much. But I think uh, a manager like Zedini, he understands Real Madrid well. I mean, he's been there. He knows how to deal with the players. And to me, for Madrid, I think it's about of you know trying now to bring in some fresh players because mm. I think the ones who are there they've they've overstayed their welcome and it's a matter it's just a matter of time before we start seeing some new names coming on board mm. so that you know people are ready to work with the new manager and I think he's the right, he's the right man for the job. Man, do you think heavy remuneration package oh. 
convinced him back at the Santiago Bernabeu because immediately after the announcement that he would be coming back to continue being the manager mm -hmm. for the Real Madrid, there are standout players who have been mentioned as the target mm. to head to Madrid. Mm. Uh, one Paul Pogba, David De Gea, Christian Eriksen from Spurs, Hazard. Uh, Eden Hazard from Chelsea Football Club, mm. Kylian Mbappe. You know, I profile names. Even Neymar was on that was Even on that Neymar list, yeah. on that particular list. Do you think money also financial muscles played a role? Yeah. First of all, the, I, I would like to disagree with only one thing that Ronald has said. For him to come back to Real Madrid, it will not be this. It will not be the same way when he mm -hmm. got the job the first time. Because okay. Ronaldo left. Not only that, he came in and won almost all the trophies that were available. Okay, with the team that so was there. So it will be a big challenge. So now. He's coming in to prove himself as a coach. Okay, you're coming in with a budget of about 500 million pounds, give or take uh, euros. You're coming in with that, that type of amount, yeah. You're coming into a locker room that obviously there's some players that have left, Cristiano Ronaldo. There's some players that feel they deserve better, Gareth Bale. There's some players who should be leaving. Real Madrid. Marcelo is leaving. Marcelo is leaving. He's going to Juventus. Sergio Ramos again. Age is catching up. So now it's going to be a tough time for him. Why I say the struggle will continue? It will continue because you need now to buy new players. You need again to set up a new team. They need to gel into your tactics. So it's not going to be very easy this time for Zidane. I'm not seeing him next season. If he, when he comes in, I'm not seeing him next season winning the La Liga. No. I'm giving him another season so that he can win the La Liga. For now, he's coming in, damage control, obviously, reputation, it's Zidane, Zidane, it's Real Madrid, it's a perfect partnership, but the hard work is going to start immediately when he gets into that dressing room. Another former high-profile player that has left his club is Paul Aaron Scholes, English <laughs> international, and he's well known for his criticism, especially towards Jose Mourinho and uh, one man who also announced international football retirement, that's Louis Van, Van Gaal, Mr. Philosopher. So, Paul Scholes has left the club, he's, you know, lived uh, uh, admiring and being a fan of, that's Allham United, I think it was by mutual agreement. Do you think uh, whatever someone showcases on the pitch doesn't necessarily determine how a good manager you can be? Because even Thierry only left Monaco. Yeah, it's true. After a short spell. Yeah, it's true. You you can be good on the you, you can be good as a player, but you can be poor as a manager. And uh, I think Henri proved that mm -hmm. at, at Monaco. He was very cri critical, critic, uh, critical of other managers. And when he was given the, the job, he also bottled it. And now he is Paul Scholes. I think he just pulled the 31-day challenge. <laughs> 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 he pulled the 31-day challenge. I mean, and there's, there's talks that he resigned via text. He sent mm -hmm. the, a text message to the, to the, club, uh, to the club owner. Mm -hmm. And to me, I think uh, he just uh, he, he succumbed under pressure because uh, maybe the things he expected that uh, older maybe he didn't get them but having said that I think uh, you can be a good pl player I mean there's a man who's made like over 700 appearances for for Manchester United and now he's been given opportunity to try and maybe be a manager and I think uh, he hasn't gone down well with him plus having said that I think he also he also owns a club I think mm -hmm. in the lower divisions mm -hmm. and we've seen him sucking the managers <laughs> <laughs> at, at his club <laughs> every Hanford, now and, yeah. yeah every now and then so to me it, he, he should just maybe stick to what he does better best i think that's maybe punditry because having being a player and being a coach those are two different things Luis van gaal mm -hmm. the dutchman announced his retirement from football now officially i thought he had retired some time back mm -hmm. but uh, now officially declaring that his age is catching up and he won't be making any manager will come back mm -hmm. to football again. But, you know, several young players whom Luis Van Gaal gave an opportunity at the tender age, especially at Man United, you know, mm -hmm. uh, joining the rest of international battalion to wish him well. Unlike before, Marcus Rashford, Anton Martial, you know, several players. Memphis Depay. Memphis Depay. Yeah. Mr. Philosopher, was he good, passionate at the age factor in terms of developing players i think i and think should, yeah. will fo football miss him football will surely miss him definitely um he brought something different into into football management trusting the youth obviously trusting the young players Fag Sir alex ferguson had done it before with manchester united he got a very big backlash at then but again louis van gaal if you look at the number of people that have passed through you know his coachship even look at the likes of patrick Kluvert. 
when we start from when we start from there you look at all these players that have come through you know Memphis Depay now Antoine Martial he has believed in the youth system he has believed in the young players and it's something that the coaches and I, I guess that's why again Pochettino is not leaving Tottenham I think he also believes in that philosophy of you know what get good players from the academy system put them in the game believe in them and trust in them and I think and I believe football will really miss him especially European football will a few minutes before we end up the show but before we do three lions Gareth Southgate named this squad as they prepare for international break and you know uh, it has also attracted heavy criticism and huge praise of course both in equal measure same inclusions that probably people uh, think they don't deserve inclusion and some omissions that you know people deserve ought to have been included Ronald Ocot, England performed spectacularly well during the just concluded World Cup yeah. in Russia, of course getting eliminated from the showpiece by Croatia at the semi-final stage. But what do you make of the squad that was named by Gareth Southgate? He's a man who's been touted as, you know, an heavyweight in terms of, uh, just like Luis Van Gaal, developing young players. Well, I think uh, if you look at uh, the way he performed with the boys at the World Cup, I think he, he did exemplary well. And uh, one thing about him, I think he said that he's trying to build a, a team for the future. And uh, he's spoiled for choice because if you look at uh, the guys who've been called up to the national team, most of them, you know, they're like young lads. People mm -hmm. are, you know, trying to make a name for themselves in the national team and all that, trying to establish themselves and maybe get a solid, uh, get a solid place, a, a permanent place in the national team. So to me... I don't think the, the, the team is that badly off because, uh, I mean, all those guys who've been caught, they, they deserve it. And for maybe those who didn't make it, it's just a matter of working hard and you know, try to impress the coach and maybe you'll get a call up because, after all, the manager's word is always final. Yeah. And Joe? I think, you know, the call ups to Declan Rice, uh, Sacho, um, proves that he's ready to gamble with these players, first of all. Secondly, he's telling the Football Association that we are building, as Ronald has said, we are building a team for the future. However, they have to be very patient with this team. It's a young team, full of vibrant people, the likes of Delhi Ali, the likes of Rashford, the likes of Hurricane. I think Hurricane, Hurricane is one of now the mature sort of James Ward Prowse. James Ward Prowse again. He deserved an inclusion. He, he, deserved, but he, he was not in the squad. Juan Bisaka, the right back for Crystal Palace. Again, what Ronald again had said, and I'm going to echo, is that he has a plethora of players to choose from. And again, sometimes you have to agree that you're not cut out for the national team. This selection, he. Gareth Southgate not only does the scouting, he has his assistant who also does the scouting for the players. Normally when you watch the English Premier League games, you'll, you'll spot him here and there. Okay, So again, performance of the team matters a lot. If James Ward Prowse was in Manchester United, he could have been picked up. But because they're not performing very well with Southampton, it becomes another issue. I, I think there's, there's, there's that schematic of how your team performs vis-a-vis -vis your call-up. But that being said, we have seen surprises whereby a couple of players were picked up. Uh, Tarowski once was picked up from Burnley. So we need to obviously understand that this manager wants to experiment a lot with the youth. But at the same time, they should not expect too much again from this youth. You remember what happened uh, to David Beckham? There was so much expectations from him. And then when he bottled it up at the last minute, he was, he was called all sorts of names. After that tackle on Diego Simeone, he was called so many names against that match against um, Argentina. So again, this time we need to obviously you know, be patient with this manager. He's trying something new and it's going to be great. We yeah. are winding up. Yeah, I now. think the same thing is happening back here at home because we've seen some guys being given a, being given a call up, and maybe fans have not. Uh, it has not gone down with the fans because uh, they feel that people who've been left out would really deserve to be in the national team than the others. So I think it's up to the manager, you know, to always call those who we thinks who, those who we think will work best with with him. Thanks, gentlemen, for coming through. No Joe Sainaman, United wow. supporter and mm -hmm. football pundit alongside Ronald Okoth. Manchester City supporter and football pundit as well. He played locally for several clubs, Gormaya Football Club. One Kenya Premiership title with them in 2013. Madara United as well alongside Western Steamer. Now as CEO, he calls himself so. How is the progress of your company, by the way? <laughs> no, I'm, I'm, the, I'm the founder. I'm not the CEO. <laughs> you are the founder. So are you looking forward to employing someone as a CEO? Yeah, definitely. I'm looking forward even to bring John board. I sent him my CV already. Uh, John already sent his CV. <laughs> 
But how comes this guy never, you know, publicly <laughs> no, we, declare we, we, the vacancy so that it can attract we have a applications vetting, from, you know, qualified candidates? We have a vetting process. <laughs> vetting process. It's been an honor having you on board on the touchline on Y25 for this particular Saturday. My name is Maxwell Wasik. Let's do this again next Saturday, same time, same place. Of course, let's keep it sporty and continue with the conversation. Kenya Open happening at the current country club. Then tomorrow, Gurma Football Club against Pedro Atletico at the Kasarani Stadium. Let's all show up in large numbers to cheer up the Kenyan side. Even if you are an FC Leopard supporter, rivalry aside, because this is now matters of uh, national importance. Thank you for staying tuned and enjoy your weekend. Have a fantastic weekend. Keep it.